Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm going to show you a perfect example of a covered call when the price of the stock shoots up way past your strike price. Now, yesterday, I actually did a video on NEO and the whole plan, the whole strategy yesterday was to simply day trade NEO. I was hoping to just buy the shares, get in and get out that same day later with a profit. Now, I could have just stuck with my original play and, you know, made some pretty good returns yesterday. That's all I was looking to do, just buy the stock and get out by the end of the day or any time during, you know, market hours for a nice little profit. Now, instead, I ended up selling covered calls on NEO because I saw the premium for a three-day expiration was roughly around $51 per contract, 51 cents you know, per share on each contract. And I thought, okay, so I have 400 shares and I can simply, you know, take those $205 or it was like $204. And then with the little capital gains that I would have received for a $16 call, it would have been like a 200 and something dollar profit for a three day expiration. Now the contracts that I sold yesterday, they expire on August 28th, which is basically in two days. And I'm like, okay, you know, I might as well do that. It's some guaranteed profits. Just let it expire. It's only three days. And so I ended up just switching from the day trade all the way to the uh, covered calls. Now, covered call writing, it's not a bad thing. You know, you're collecting premium. I love doing that. However, in this instance, I didn't expect Neo to, you know, skyrocket that high past the strike price. I thought, okay, maybe it'll go above 16 just a few cents and then come right back down and then maybe even to back to above 16. So that's what I thought, you know, that's what I thought Neil was going to do, maybe skyrocket to maybe 1650 or something or even 17 maybe. And then, you know, sell off people taking profits and come right back down. But in this case, it ended up spiking even a little bit higher. You can see that I'm actually up uh $1300. However, because of the contracts that I sold, I'm limited and capped to how much money I can make on this trade. Because I sold those contracts with a $16 strike price, you can see right there, NEO $16 call expires on August 28th. I basically capped, you know, what I'm able to make on this trade. I can only make as far as $16 per share. I bought them at $15.82. I bought 400 shares and I thought, okay, you know, a little over $200. It's not going to be that bad, right? Now, I am still going to be profitable because I plan on letting these options expire. Just take those profits. You know, some profits are better than no profits. Now, what you can also do if you choose to is buy the contracts back and roll it over for next month if you want or the following month. <coughs> excuse me, depending on how far you're going out of the money or in the money. So it's really up to you. So you can basically roll it over and sell some more covered, you know, some more covered call contracts or simply just wait for the price of a stock to go even higher if that's what you think. However, you're stuck in a contract. The shares are tied up as collateral. We collected premium for that. So if I were to choose to buy the options back, I'm going to show you right now for August 28th. Remember, we sold them. Now, on the little combination up here, you would have to buy them. Now, Neo, it's in the money on those covered calls, on those calls. Because when we bought the shares, it was right under $16. The $16 call was out of the money. Now, it's in the money, meaning it's worth a lot more too. Even though it's expiring in just two days. So if I were to choose to buy the options back, look at how much I would have to pay now. Compare that to what I received. So not only would I have to give up, you know, what I received in premium, but on top of that, I would have to pay out, out that, the difference, you know, for 1300, which is roughly $1,100 more to get out of the contract. Now, in this case, yes, I can roll it over, but it doesn't really make sense for me because I do weekly and monthly covered calls on Neo when I do sell covered calls. 
So rolling it over on 400 shares, I can choose a further out, out of the money strike price. But to me, in my opinion, having my shares taken away, it's really not a bad thing. I don't fall in love with the stock. I'm long-term bullish on it if I'm ever down. I've been day trading it, swing trading it, selling puts on it, and selling covered calls since it was $2 per share. So I've been taking profits along the way. Now, it's a stock that I'm doing it on because if I'm ever down on it, I'm okay with that. That's what I mean when I'm, when I'm saying you know, I'm long-term bullish. Doesn't mean that I just have to buy it and hold it forever. Now, I like to take profits along the way. Now, this is how much I would have to pay for these contracts. So on your screen, you're actually going to see a, a negative. See, it's a total return negative 1,136 right now. But uh, this is gonna fluctuate because the market just opened a few minutes ago. So the negative sign, all it means is that's how much money you would have to overpay for those options if you choose to buy them back. You're basically losing out on a lot more money right now. This is, this is exactly what's happening. I'm losing out on money that I could have made if I wouldn't have sold those covered call contracts. So again, what you can do is just simply take those profits and call it a day and then, you know, this, these kind of things are, are gonna happen once in a while. Now, it rarely happens to me when it does shoot up past the strike price. It's only by a few cents. Plus, you know, you have to take in consideration that you collected the premium. Now, these kind of uh, plays where it shoots up even higher rarely has happened to me, but uh, today was actually a very good example. I did a video on this yesterday on how the, uh, you know, I ended up switching plays and I ended up missing out on extra gains unless I would have bought the contracts back yesterday. So these are the uh, kind of decisions that you have to make sometimes, whether it makes sense to buy the option back, roll it over or buy it back and hold on to it. Because sometimes after a gap like this, the price of the stock is also gonna drop because people are taking profits. So you have to expect some kind of healthy pullback, which is which is uh, pretty normal on any stock that gaps up real fast like that. So in this case, just wanted to share with you guys the downside of writing covered calls when this does happen to you. You miss out on those extra gains. Now it doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen and it's gonna happen to you if you like writing covered calls. It will happen eventually. If it hasn't happened to you, then it will eventually. And then you, you just have to decide what to do, whether you wanna, hey, buy the options back, roll it over, buy the options back, keep the shares if you think it's gonna go even higher or take the profits on what you got on the premium. So there's a few different choices that you can do. Now, in my case, I'm simply gonna let it expire and take those little profits that I got and uh, you know, maybe try to get back into NEO on any dip or even sell some puts on it. I've done videos on selling puts on stocks that you're willing to hold and you actually get paid to buy the stock if you get assigned. So go ahead and check it out. And uh, thank you very much guys for all your support. If you guys like these kind of videos on the Robinhood platform, show me by hitting that like button. And until then, I'll see you guys on the next video.